What's up, guys? This is HH Trader back with another Trader Combo uh, video. In this video, I want to make it a mixture of recap and Trader Combo. Um, and you guys can tell me or, or kind of chime in in the chat how you like it. Uh, but in this week, this week has been a very weird week for me. Um, I've definitely broken rules that I haven't broken in a while uh, trading and it's it definitely woke me up this week right woke me up especially coming into summertime and coming into some of the the more choppier periods of the year so before we get into this I have a couple of criteria that I like to follow and I pop those up here so very short analysis questions um so the first thing i want to see in the ticker i want to see something that's over two dollars second thing is i want to see something with obvious support levels on the daily chart right uh number three i want something with an abnormally large percent gain on the day number four i want stocks under 100 million in the float number five i want to see some type of catalyst number six if the stocks that are competing with the stock that I am interested in on the day, um, if they double or triple its volume and they have a catalyst, it's a no trade on that stock, right? On that ticker, because that catalyst and that ticker is losing out to a larger cap or another sector that has a catalyst. So I just, I'm like, oh, never mind, right? So these are the short criteria. And now we're going to take these and look at my two trades from this week and kind of analyze them and see what in the world went went on this week. So I'll minimize that. So out here, the two the two tickers that I traded this week were HOTH and MGRX. So we'll go with HOTH first. Uh, I traded this one on Tuesday. That was the sixth um, two days ago. And on this one, if we look back at the daily chart, I mean, just starting at this daily chart, we can see that this thing gives back a lot of gains, right? A lot of gains. And for me, I saw this and I was like, ah, oh, I'll be all right, right? I'll be all right. And sometimes, you know, confidence um, transpires into pride. And, you know, it's just not good when you get confident and you're like you know what it's it's just gonna work out for me because this is my strategy because this is something that i'm looking for but you get so confident and so prideful that you miss what things that this thing what variables of your actual strategy that this thing is breaking um another thing about um about the kind of like when I get up in the morning and I go through the routine of getting ready to trade when I'm here at home getting ready to trade I sit down I do a nice analysis of the market and I don't mean this is before the uh stream before I live stream or anything like that I get up look at the market take a good look take a deep breath go and just clear first of all if I see something that I'm excited about definitely go and just take some time to think it over come back and look at the market right on the days that I'm not here at home, I've noticed that I'm breaking down on the routine. My routine, usually I come in, I read through my rules, have everything lined up, and I'm like, okay, this is good, let's get it, right? But on the days that I'm not here and I'm traveling and trading, those days are where my routine breaks down. Maybe I don't read the rules, maybe I don't uh, regard the rules as much, and I'm seeing that that is being a um, kind of like a deficit in my trading, right? So when I'm looking around and looking at Hoth right now and seeing all of these days or, or moments in time that it's giving back profit, you would say, man, well, you know, it gives back profit a lot. What, what, I mean, why would you trade this, right? And so what I was looking at on that day, it was coming down to this level and you know a lot of times i talk about imaginary levels imaginary levels are basically levels that nobody else can see but you 
right? And so I saw this level right here at the three, right around the three, right under the 325-ish level. I was like, man, that could be a level that actually holds, right? And I was looking around, looking around, and I was like, man, but is this obvious, though? I mean, I see a nice little fall down, and it's got a little range, but is this obvious, right? A more obvious level would have been right here, this other section that I marked right here on the 250s. Nice, long consolidation on 250. If it drip, dipped down to 250, I would have been a lot more confident taking this trade, right? A lot of touches on 250. But because I took a early little stab at the three uh, 17s there, this thing continued down and went ahead and stopped me out. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm okay. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm done with it. Um, I really like looking for obvious things. Really like the long co consolidations, like a, a stock gapping up and coming back to a long consolidation or maybe a flat top breakout or something that is more noticeable about or noticeable to everyone right now let's flip over to mgrx and this is without the actually let's before we flip over to uh, mgrx the obvious thing that's that number two thing on the on the list stocks with a obvious support level not some kind of imaginary support level something that everyone can see is what i need to be a part of um, and then the other one over here is MGRX. And so looking at MGRX, I mean, just starting off, if we just look at MGRX, price of what, a dollar and something, uh, it re received a good amount, what, 44 million shares traded. But let's go look at the rule set. What is the first rule here? Stocks over $2. And I was trading below $2 today. And I got burned, um, definitely got burned and kind of went on a cascade of um, a cascade of rule breaks here. So I broke the first rule. And. And I was looking for this level here, right at this previous, what, 170 ish level. I was like, well, maybe it can hold. It's not really obvious support, but maybe it'll hold right. And when I get to those situations where I'm like, well, maybe it'll hold, I need to stop myself immediately and say, no, 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 no. Either it's going to be obvious and I'm going to be confident in the level or stop. But the one thing that I did realize today when I broke that first rule was, hey, we're under $2, so support may not be as strong as we would see in something else, right? And a perfect example of that today was BAOS. BAOS came down and I saw this in the Discord. I actually called this out in the Discord. I was like, yo, um, everybody, what y'all think about this level right here? What do y'all think about this level right at 10? And I'll pull up the Discord real quick. If you're not a part of the Discord, I'll make sure to put a link in there. But this is what I was looking at earlier today on the 10 when I was out working and I saw it. I was like, man, that thing looks kind of good. So up here, I was trading, 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 whatever. We we're talking in the Discord. And if, like I said, we'll we'll put a link to this in the uh, in the okay. So this is today, starting today. We're going through everything uh that we were seeing on today. Uh I Rooster, Dunnell, and I was in there talking about these different stocks and let me see where did i talk about here it is so we were all looking at this baos ten dollar mark and i was like man that ten dollar mark looks crazy good um and i might might have been a little bit further up here wmb rooster let's see let's see but yeah basically this is a rolling chat throughout the day um and i'm not seeing it i'm not seeing where that was Bo this morning bos is moving so that's when i called it out but that's not when i saw the price level uh of the 10. where 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 oh where and they were trading other things as well um getting busy okay yeah 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 so this was where we were looking at this ten dollar level 
and I was seeing the volume drop and I was like, hmm, I wonder, is this becoming unattractive or is this appealing? And this is when it was right above the $10 level. It was like 1025 or something before it actually dipped through. And <clears throat> just going over there briefly, that $10 level, if we look back on the chart, and let's say we uh, extend this on back to the left, we can see that that $10 level has got a bunch of touches and it has a lot of historical value for this stock, right? A lot of touches at this $10 level, right? Back here, let me zoom in and then scroll back. Right in here, this is one consolidation point around the 10. Then we saw a test of the 10 there, a lot of historical data, and then in here. So multiple touches on the on these points um, in the past. And that's what I wanna look for. A, a obvious support level that we can extend the history and say okay this thing has been touched before we see the reaction we see what happened and we know that people are thinking about this ten dollar level right and i mean ten dollars anyway is a level that a lot of people are like hmm ten dollars is interesting let's see if it can hold over 10 let's see if it dumps through 10 it's a very interesting level no matter how you look at it or what historical value you uh, have Anyway, let's go uh, back over to MGRX. So MGRX, again, we pretty much pointed out everything that I wanted to go over today. Uh, broke the rules on it. Definitely got a, a nice little sting in my backside. So I have a red month on my hands right now. Uh, this first week, I only took two trades and I'm definitely red on the month. And um, we'll look to visualize or fix my routine especially when i'm out i need to build some kind of routine um but the variables are always changing when i'm out you know i'm at work you know getting a call here answering an email here doing blah 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 but when i'm here at home it's just chill and i can even if i'm working on something it's not so many variables coming from you know external variable random external variables so I want to try to get get away from losing focus on what the strategy is, what I want to look for when I'm have, getting called out of the office, then coming back and not really reviewing. I, I think what I'm going to start doing is treating every time that I get interrupted from a trade like a the, the start of a new trading day. So when I come back, I'm going to reread the rules. I'm going to re get into a trading mode and then go into the um, the trade or well trade or no trade or neutral whatever right that's how I think I need to do it because when you when your mind gets called off in an instant and then you come back you're really not in a trading mode I could have been programming I could have been doing you know uh, messing with some kind of switch or you know get a network back online or something and then i come back and i'm not really in the trading mindset so i want to work on getting back in that trading mindset no matter what starting the whole routine over every single time read those rules um analyze the charts look through everything that i have and then let's go from there right take use that use that time that i'm out is like a rebreather you know just like okay now let's get back into trading, right? Um, but yeah, today was definitely a day that I took a stinger. It was it's a pretty good one. Um, I really just oversized, broke rules, did everything that I was doing like a year ago. Um, and I cut it. Of course, I cut the loss, but I was using bigger position size, so it really didn't matter uh, whether I cut it or not. Actually, it did because I could have been down like $2,000 uh, today, but not that much um let's actually look at the calendar for this month what i'm looking at so i traded these two days uh this is my june month absolutely going horrendous right now i took one trade on tuesday which was my bmr that i'm still holding I took a trade on friday and then this was this tuesday trade and on both of these days man there were busy days i just i gotta call my mind in call myself back to the trading mindset because I cannot come in here with these professional folks 
that are zoned in and and looking for a bounty and be playing around in the market right I want to take it as serious as possible every single trade. I don't take many trades. I take like, what, six trades a month. Uh, but I want to capitalize more coming into these next two weeks and really focus in on following the rules, following the strategy, and just being... Because the thing is, there is some leeway in every strategy, right? But there are certain valuable variables that must be met. And some of those that I have listed... In, in my stats, I know that I need to get this done. I need to get this, you know, be focused in and not be playing around out here. But anyway, that is just a recap for um, what's going on this month. This month, oh man, gotta get on back on the uh, back on the choo choo train for this month, or either pull back and say, hey. Unless something is absolutely, I cannot miss out on this, especially when the catalyst is hot and it is maybe a leading in, leading in volume, then cool. But other than that, if it's just a weak catalyst during this time, I'm just like, hey, I may be hands off. But we'll see. Um, anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have faced an issue where, hey, you just go through like a day of cascading rule breaks or like a, a, a momentary, like, or maybe you travel and trade, maybe you work and trade. And sometimes you've noticed that you got to kind of refocus on the trade before you can actually get a pinpoint entry or get a nice sniper shot. But anyway, let me know in the comment section. Um, if you enjoyed these videos, please hit that like button and we will be back uh, tomorrow morning with a live stream. I will have all of that in the link in the description. You can check out the rest of the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.